is our refuge and strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. And as the body of Christ, one of the things that we learn about praising on purpose means that we don't always wait until we need God in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a calamity. But we praise Him just because He is our God of our refuge. He's our refuge and strength, our very present God. Hallelujah. We know that there is no thing that He can, cannot do. Nothing.
the children's story. Jonathan Rivers, let's give him a round of applause. by the Lord to do this, to remove his people from Pharaoh's rule in Egypt. Moses was a Hebrew man. Okay, remember, he was born in Egypt, though. So when Moses was older, okay, around 40 years old or so, he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave. So you guys know what he did to that Egyptian? He killed him. You're right, Charles, he beat him up badly. He killed him. So because he was afraid he was going to get some backlash, he fled, which means he did what? He left, okay? He left to a place called Midian, and while he was there, he was able to get a, get a wife, have some children, but he also became a shepherd at that point in time. I want you to realize why this is important. He became a shepherd and also understood how to take care of the land of Sinai when he was there. He became familiar with that wilderness. Now, had he been called to bring the people out of Egypt yet? No, but he fled from Egypt because he was afraid he was going to be killed for killing an Egyptian, and he was able to become familiar with the wilderness of Sinai. So then when the Lord commissioned him to remove his people out of Egypt, that wilderness where he led them, where was that wilderness? In Sinai. And where had he been years before that? In Sinai. You think he knew that was going to happen? No, but that's God's provision. God had placed him, even though he was fleeing by his own fear, God placed him in a position to prepare him for where he was going to lead his people. I'm going to tell you guys a quick story. About, I don't know, 10 years ago, I went on this job interview in Macon, Georgia, and I had to go before this panel. And after the job interview, they said, well, we don't have any hiring. There's a freeze on hiring. So I come home and I said, well, why the heck did I have to go all the way to Macon for me to be told there's no job available? You understand? Wouldn't you say that, Alice? Yeah, absolutely. So a month later, I get a job interview with another institution, and the interview gets set up the exact same way. They ask me the exact same questions in the exact same manner in front of the exact same number of people, but the whole situation is different. So while I went to Macon, and I thought that there was no reason for me to go to Macon, I was prepared for what was coming a month later. When Moses left Egypt and went to Sinai, even though he was in the wilderness, he became a shepherd, which means he was able to take care of sheep, which means he was able to take care of his people, leading them in the wilderness that he had been in before. So sometimes in life, you may go to a place spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and you don't understand why you're there, but remember, your thoughts are not God's thoughts, so he may be preparing you for a later time to be in that same situation. Amen? Does that make sense? All right. Who would like to close out in a word of prayer? Come on, my dear.
Gracious God, and never done and sorrow. And Father, out of your attributes, we worship you today. In Jesus' name. politician. 
Trump, Joe Biden, <laughs> not the mayor, or anyone else. God has a purpose, and his purpose is best carried out through his soul and his life. Neither would he use Eddie Murphy in Hollywood or Denzel Washington. Neither heroes. He's not going to use money. Nothing is said in this particular chapter about money, is it? And that is our excuse. We don't have money to do things. Now, he uses light to light the world. Now, if salt salts the earth and light lights the world, then this age has hope. But if salt does not function as salt, Jesus said it is good for nothing but to be trod out and cast away. The same with light. If you are hot the light and put it on under a bushel, it's no good. So he looked at them and he said, you are my light. Now, in the Greek, Salt and light is in what they call the emphatic position. And that is in a position that is most important. So the most important thing in this verse is light. You are the light of the world. Amen. Let me bring it uh, home a little bit closer. If you are a Christian, you've been born again. You are a Christian. And if you are a Christian, you are a disciple. And if you are a disciple, then you have to function as light. Nothing is said in this verse, in this <coughs> chapter about joining the church, is it? Although I believe that we should join a local church, and a local church is a place where you carry out your ministry through the local church because God ordained the church. But you see, many times we can become members of the church and we are not Christians. You see, there are probably just as many new Christians in church as there are Christians. And so Jesus said, I'm going to use light to light this age. And if light functions as light, then this world has hope. But if light fails to function as light, then there's darkness all around. The first thing that God did in Genesis 1 was create light. Let there be light because darkness was over the earth. And when I get home at night, the first thing that I do is look for the light switch to go on. First, the primacy of light or the importance of, of, of light. Light is very important. First, it guides you, it leads you, and it helps you to see uh, your way. It is so important. So Jesus said, if you got light, which all of us do, then put it on a lampstand where everyone that walks in the house can see. If you are in your living room and you got the light in the basement, what good is it doing in the living room? talk to me. So the light must uh, be important enough for you to adhere to that light and not only adhere to it, but to put it where it's supposed to be. That's the promise of light. So important. And this is why we got a sun that shines constantly. You are not to shine on your own. You are only to reflect the light of Jesus, yeah. just like the moon does. The moon has no light of its own. Did you know that? It, it has no light of its own. I know sometimes <coughs> at night you look at the moon shining brightly, but the moon is only a reflector of sunlight. And you see, if you reflect the light of Christ, then the world has hope. You, my friend, are the light of the world. That's how important light is. And I understand that light travels at about 182 uh, 
some thousand miles uh, per second. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, so they can determine the age of the universe by how far those planets have expanded from one another. Light is very important to all ages. Second, the position of light. Now, a lot of us light up when we come to church, don't we? Come on, be with me. I know I got some lights out there that can right. light up unless they're around their friends. Let's be in church, listen to the piano, play, uh, listen to their friends, praise the Lord, and get them somewhere. But Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And the position in of salt and light is always to shine. You see, because you and you alone gives the world hope. So the position of, of light. And Jesus said, you is not only... Uh, reflected, but you are a light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. But not just the position of light, the power of light. Light is very powerful. One shining light has the ability to attract people in the darkness to that light. In Nineveh, the light was in the ocean when it should have been in the city, preaching the gospel to the people. Jonah, what, what was the light? One, one light could save over 120,000 people. But God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Guess where he went? He headed towards Spain. And finally, the light wound up in the ocean. The fish didn't need the light. The people in Nineveh needed the light. So when, when God got the light out of the ocean uh, and, and got it on his course, the Bible said that Jonah made the trip in one day, in three days' time. Well, it was three days' journey. He made it in one day. And when he began to preach uh, that God was going to destroy Nineveh, the Bible says the people repented. They took Jonah at his word. And all the city passed, even the cattle passed, and the city repented. The only thing is Jonah got angry with God because God spared a people that Jonah hated. And so the light will attract people that we love, that we hate, but even so, it gets the job done. You are the light of the world. That's the power of light. But not just the power of light, the purpose of light. What purpose does light perform? First of all, light illuminates. It makes things brighter, makes things uh, clearer. I went in, uh, woke up one night and couldn't find the light switch. I thought I was in hell <laughs> before I got it. Uh, the Bible talked about out of darkness. Y'all don't read that in the scripture. It talks about out of darkness. So the light will illuminate, and it will tell you what's what. You can't hide things from the light. The Bible says that the light dwelled in darkness, but the darkness did not overcome the light. They around the city have seen a great light, and the Bible says Christ is that light. And if you got somebody who wants to see a, a light, and they're looking at you, let your light shine. Now, the Bible did not say, make your light shine, did it? He said, let it shine. In other words, if you got Christ in you, trim your lamp sometime. Trim your lamp and let the light naturally shine. You don't have to make the light shine. You don't have to have the pastor calling your name all the time. You don't have to wait till the piano start playing before you let your light shine. You don't have to... Let your light shine. And light guides you. Light guides you. I'm going to tell you this. A lot of folks are going to hell because of preachers. Leading folks astray. They follow us. The watching world. Somebody wrote a book of the watching world. One of the uh, great books of the Western world. 
The world is watching you. People you have before are watching the world that is watching everything that you do. They're watching your tracks. They don't want your tracks, they're watching your tracks. I had this experience. I was coming from uh, Hamilton, Georgia. I had been out in Augusta somewhere, but some time ago. And it was so far, I declared, you could take it and you could slice it up with a knife. That's part of people. I couldn't see three feet. But then everybody parked on the side. And finally, somebody took out. Somebody else followed that tail light. When they did, I grabbed me a tail light to follow. I made it home because I saw the light and followed the light of someone else. The same thing as a guiding light that guides us on the ocean. They had a lighthouse. And when that was when ships got lost, they looked for the light in the lighthouse. Are you a lighthouse to the lost? Are you a lighthouse to the sun? Are you a, a lighthouse to the ones who don't know the way? It serves as a guiding light. Then light comes. It comforts those who are in uh, distress. Children wake up at night, they want to be comforted. They can't get comfort through the darkness, but through light, you see, because Jesus said, you are the light of, of the world. How many times uh, have people looked at you? How many times have they been hungry and wanted a church home, wanted somebody, wanted an inner comforter, and we failed to comfort? The Bible said, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. And the Bible says he comforts us, meaning the Holy Ghost comforts us with a comfort whereby we have comforted others who are likewise in distress. If you never had a problem, yes. you'll never know that God could solve them. Yes. And if you have never had illnesses and sicknesses and trials and trouble and tribulation, then you can't guide anybody else in the yes. The Bible says, comfort my people. Light comforts. Yes, sir. And light destroys. What do you think they do when you go on the x-ray? They take lasers to destroy tumors. I got my operation by a laser. They didn't cut me. I thought I would, when I got through, I thought I'd be bleeding. I didn't bleed. They did it through laser. And you see, light destroys. It destroys sin. It makes it open. Many of us would be surprised. You've got away from man. You've, you've hid your stuff. Pastor don't know what you're doing. I'm not trying to find out what you're doing. I don't care what you're doing. Tell you. only, only in a preaching role. But you, you've got by it. But you want to condemn other folks. When you get to heaven, the light will expose you. It'll expose your sin. That, that was done in the darkness. The Bible says, shall come to light. And you, everything you've done will come back in your life. And as Bill Milton wrote, if walls could talk, Lord have mercy, a lot of us would be ashamed if walls could talk. You see, Jesus was a great light. He lit this world, did he not? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. You see, some things people have to see. And they saw God in the flesh. And when he was going away, uh, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Jesus said, have I not been so long with you, Philip, and yet you don't know me? You don't know God? And sometimes, folks, we need people in the church to be a great light. Go light your work. Go light your community. Go light your family. Then light nourishes. I'm an old farmer. I grew up in a farm, so I know uh, uh, as much about farming as anybody here. And sometimes chickens would drop eggs all over the yard. And we would get those eggs and put them in the nest. Sometimes they would start hatching the incubator process, and 
the hen would get disgusted down on them, frightened, what happened, and leave the eggs in the nest. Martha would get a light and put that light in that nest. And you know, the warmth from that light, that burn all night, that burn all day, would hatch those baby chicks and mature them into chicken wood. <laughs> Am I right about that? <laughs> and, and, and so the purpose of the light <laughs> is to light the world. The purpose of the light is not only to comfort but to nourish. Nourish the baby Christians in the church. They need nourishment. Nourish somebody out in the world who do not have the life. Nourish them. Comfort them. Guide them. Illuminate them. You know something else that light does? Light attracts. It attracts all kinds of people and all kinds of animals and all kinds of things. Flies even would come to light on that lampstick. Bugs, everything. Now that represents the bad folk. Bad folk can't stand to be exposed in their life. We all have a conscience. And guilt is embedded in bad folk's consciousness as it is in a Christian. So light attracts. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. How then do you lift up Jesus? You can't lift him up by saying. You can't lift him up. I don't care how I preach, I can't lift Christ up by preaching. That's not the way you lift Christ up. You lift up the cross. You see, Jesus spoke of his death. If I be lifted up from the earth, meaning that if he died on the cross, then he would draw all men unto him. And so we are to preach the cross. We are to be the Jonas in Nineveh. We are to be the Paul in Syria. We are to go to the end of the world preaching and teaching the gospel. Yes. If earth is salty and world is lit, like it, then this earth has hope. But if it doesn't, I don't care how many votes you cast, there's no hope in the world. And I know some of you may be a little sad when I say this because you're Democrats. Some of you may be Republicans. Some of you may be dependent on Kamala Harris or this uh, big woman uh, ran for government last time. <laughs> but it's true, folks. You are the light of the world, not the politicians, not the government, not the Democratic Party, not the Republican Party. So light attracts. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, then light is personal. It's a personal thing. You got a light. And every once in a while, when I look out, I, I see a, 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 a light out there that's dim, but it's still a light. All you got to do is give it a little more oil, the Holy Spirit. Then your light will start shining brightly. I grew up as a granny's boy, and one of my jobs was to go out and cut wood and get up in the morning, make a pie. Then I would go down to my mother's house. But I noticed one thing about pie. We had put it in the pie plate, we put wood in the pie place, and then it would be covered up with ashes. Then what I would do is get a piece of wood and start a pan. And I would put the paper on that, and very soon the paper would ignite, and we'd have a big fire with the wood chips. Keep your lamp post trimming and burning. You never know when God may come. You never know who's watching. You never know who you will affect. You know the story of Billy Graham. Mordecai Ham came to town and he preached a whole two weeks and got only eight fish. But guess what? One of the fish that he caught was Dr. Billy Graham. 
who has literally had thousands, millions of folks converted in his ministry. You don't know who you are affecting. The, the, the person that led me to, don't know today. I tried to look up and maybe the Holy Spirit didn't allow me to find out who it was. Yeah. The souls I want is a tribute to her. People you never know. The people that look at your life, when your life is shining, yeah. whom you have affected, yeah. and who will be in heaven with you. Let your light shine. Let it shine in the church. Yeah. You don't have to be the big dog on everything. Let it shine. Yeah. You don't have to be the big end in church. <laughs> let, let, let it shine. <laughs> To shine in your family, that they can see fatherhood, that they can see motherhood, that they can see a Christian who is so concerned. Yeah. Let your light shine yeah. on earth. Yeah. Yeah. That your father, the purpose of the light shine is what? Glorify God. That it may glorify your father in heaven. And give God the glory in everything. And, and when you get this story, when folks start bragging on you, send it back to Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. To God. For the great things he has done. And as Brother Rollins was saying this morning, I mean, this is very careful. Y'all don't think that you listen to Praise with purpose. Worship with purpose. Sing with purpose. Have the church on purpose. Pray on purpose. Preach on purpose. And wait for the Lord to do it on purpose. Let them see the great light in you. Shining through for your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. People, one of the great things I believe missing in the church today. It's coming. Don't turn your back on the sound when he's going through something, she's going through something. Comfort her, comfort him. Don't look over these young folk. Young folks are having a problem. First of all, they don't know who they are. Some of them don't know whether they're a man or woman, a boy or girl. Pray with them. Don't talk about them. Pray to them. Be a light to them. Wrap your round arms around each other. And guide them to their destination. But you have the power to change their destination. They're not going in the right direction. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, be a light. Be a light by letting your light shine. I don't care how small it is. I don't care how big it is. Let it shine. Father, we thank you this morning for the great light you've given to us. You've lighted every man's light on the inside of us. And Lord God, we thank you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, who was a great light of this universe. Even when he died, Heavenly Father, the sun refused to shine because the Son of God was shining. Thank you, Father, for this fellowship. Let our light shine brighter day by day as saints of yours. Father, we'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory. We'll thank you ever 
for what you've done through the Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit that you put within us, that you put in the church to ignite the fire that God put in us. Keep the fire burning on the altar. For your commandment in the Philippines that the fire should not ever go out on the altar. We thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Even our president of God, we lift him up to you because he's in your hand. Yes. Somehow or another you had a hand in this. I don't know how, but you had a hand in this. We lift up your pastors, your preachers all over. Some of us are, are, are crooked. Some of us are crooked. And some of us are trying to do your will for God. But through it all, we are human. Humans have faults. They have fallibilities. They have failures. Help us. Lord, we lift up our family. The family is disintegrated. But Lord, you said these things must be. I pray that Christian families will not be torn, but that they will stay together. They'll be together. They'll pray together. So Lord, my final prayer is help us to love one another, to be of the same mind to one another, to comfort one another, to encourage one another, and when need be, to warn one another. And oh, Father, last, to rebuke one another when necessary. My prayer to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The door of the church is open. Not gonna go on anybody, not gonna scold anybody. But if you need a savior, the door of the church is open to you. If you want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, we welcome you. Yeah, one.